Will Scream 6 be the darkest Scream film of them all? Let's get into this. What's your favorite scary movie? Everybody, what's up? Killjoy Jake here, and instead of having friends, I have horror movies. Today we're talking a little bit about Scream 6 with a little crazy theory of mine. Something that makes a lot of sense considering that this next film is going to be taking a lot of risks. We're going to talk about how dark Scream 6 is going to get, but first, I'm going to need y'all to like this video and subscribe for more horror content, especially if you're new here. Ma make sure to subscribe. It's, it's always a good time just, just hitting that subscribe button and then like poking it a little bit. But anywho, let's get into the Scream 6 theory, talking about how dark this thing could possibly get. So many Scream fans have speculated that Scream 6 will be the second film film in a brand new trilogy from Radio Silence. There's no confirmation at this time that Scream 7 is happening, but it's highly speculated considering that just about every other sequel trilogy we have gotten from big franchises like Scream have come in threes. So it would make a lot of sense if they had a Scream 5, 6, and 7, and then maybe 6 leads into 7 somehow. Could it also be following another sequel trilogy very closely? Maybe the same format, the same style? And that franchise I'm talking about is of course the Halloween franchise. Could it be following that same trilogy format where you have Halloween 2018, and Scream 5. Very similar films in a lot of ways. You have our main characters triumph over evil and like they basically have this massive win. Laurie Strode at the end of that film of course overcomes Michael and basically what you would assume is that Michael burns to death in her basement. But that's not what happens in Halloween Kills of course as he emerges from the fire, kills all those firemen and ultimately well kills her daughter, which is super upsetting and messed up. So will Scream 6 follow a similar path? Will it be a much darker movie compared to its predecessor that ultimately had one of the happiest endings maybe of the entire franchise because of how unsuccessful our Ghostface killers were this time around? If you remember in that last film, we had four new characters survive that film as well as two legacy characters. So uh, for the most part, these these killers were pretty unsuccessful. Although you do kind of got to give them credit though because they did kill one of the legacy characters and that's something that literally none of the other Ghostface characters ended up doing. So in a lot of ways, maybe they were successful. It all depends on your, your viewpoint, I guess. Or maybe if you're absolutely pissed at Amber for killing Dewey. You know, you know, it's one or the other, however you feel about it. In a lot of ways, Halloween Kills was kind of predictable with the deaths. I feel like that's not exactly the reason you went to that film, though. You went to that film to see people die. I mean, it's it's in the it's in the, the fucking subtitle. Halloween Kills. What else did you expect from a movie titled that? Like this amazing Oscar award-winning plot? No. I went into that film expecting Michael Myers to be brutal as all fuck. The carnage was gonna be through the roof as well as the body count, I wasn't expecting much more than that from the film, which I guess is why I wasn't so disappointed. People really held, held that film up to a very high standard. But it's a film called Halloween Kills. I mean, just look at how silly that title is, man. I wasn't expecting much more than just like a crazy slasher movie with a lot of kills. That's And that's basically what it is to a lot of people. I think the plot line is pretty clunky and pretty silly at times. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Were you expecting anything different? No, I, I really wasn't. I think people had really high expectations for that film, which is why they were so disappointed by it. But at the same time, I do understand why it was so polarizing. They implemented a bunch of social commentary about mob, ment mob mentality, which personally, I actually really cared for because it was like they dove into this whole new realm of psychological horror they had never really de de delved into in the Halloween franchise, which I thought was cool. A lot of people didn't like that. I mean, I, I will agree. Tommy Doyle was a bit annoying saying, evil dies tonight like 4,600,000 times. But I will say, I did like a lot of the new things they implemented in that film. It's an experimental movie, and for that, I appreciate it. Even if you don't like it, you do have to appreciate the fact that they really tried to do something different with that film. So with Scream 6, could they do something similar? Radio Silence has talked a lot about wanting to take big risks with this next film. They even have a quote about it. I believe it was Tyler Gillette who said that. So will they do the same thing with Scream 6? Some people who might have hated Halloween Kills might be hearing this right now and being like, no, don't do that. That would suck. But to me... At least we can appreciate Halloween Kills for doing something different. Is it the worst movie of the franchise? No. B by far, no. Some of y'all are forgetting about Halloween 5 if, if y'all think that Halloween Kills is the worst in the entire franchise. Or what about Rob Zombie's Halloween 2? Or what about Halloween Resurrection? My god, what an abomination. That's coming from the guy who preaches not to shit on horror movies, even the bad ones, because 
it's it's just a bad movie. Like it's just a thoughtless, careless. We had no point in doing some of the changes we had in Halloween Resurrections. It's maybe the biggest cash grab of all time, just because they wanted to make another movie where Michael was still alive, even though they very clearly killed him in the last film. I don't think that making a Scream film that risks it all and does something different is that, though. And I also don't think Halloween Kills was a cash grab, either. They had a point with their commentary. They had a point to implement certain and different things into the Halloween franchise to keep it fresh, because if they would have just made another movie that was exactly like the 1978 movie, that would have been kind of boring. I don't want the same old, same old in a sequel, especially not when we're down into like the 12th, 13th sequel of, of a film. And I kind of feel the same way about the sixth movie in a franchise as well. With Scream, I want them to implement a bunch of different things with this next movie because otherwise it's just going to feel like the same old, same old, like what we've gotten in the past. I want something brand new. I want something I've never seen before. Even if it's not as good as some of the predecessors, I'd still be able to appreciate Scream 6 for just being something different. It would stand out to fans no matter what it was. Was. The recipe for disaster with Scream 6 is trying to do something that is exactly like Scream 2. Something a lot of fans are worried about right now, and I hope that's not the case. So, my pitch as to what they could do to do something different, do, do something that's just devastating and so dark and would really catch, throw fans off guard, I think. In the trailer for Scream 5, we see Sam stabbing Richie, which we find out after watching the movie that Richie was one of the killers, and it was like, oh, okay, that wasn't that big of a shock, kind of obvious to make the boyfriend character a killer, but hey, I'm not complaining because we got to see Jack Quaid do a third act ghost face speech, which is fucking awesome. But I think they probably should have taken that scene out of the trailer because it led to a lot of theories that ultimately led to the speculation of Richie being one of the killers. But something they could do to throw off their audience is to break the formula in a way that has never been done before by gaslighting a character into killing somebody else, thinking they're ghost face, but it's not. Now, I talked about how maybe, oh, maybe Sam's gaslit into killing her boyfriend and Richie wasn't actually the killer all along. And when we got that scene in Scream 5 where Dewey was going on about, oh, the love interest is always the killer. I'm like, that's it. That's what's going to happen. That didn't end up happening. Could they possibly use that idea for Scream 6 now, though, with Tara? What if Sam accidentally kills her sister? Now, you might be asking yourself once again, Jake, there's no way they could set that up. How the hell would, like, if she's looking right at her sister, there's no way they would they would kill her. And also, did they do that in Scream 5, technically, Jake? They tried to make you think, like, oh, Sam thinks that Tara's the ghost face killer. That's just repeating the same thing as the last movie. Oh, but they're gonna do it differently in Scream 6, I say. We should have a scene where a brand new character brings Sam into a certain room with one of the ghost faces tied up. And they say something along the lines of, let's unmask this fucker and take him to the police. But it's all one big scheme to gaslight Sam into murdering this person in a ghost face costume, which Sam does end up doing, saying, we have to shoot him in the head. You know, Dewey died because he didn't end up just taking him out. We just have to kill him right now. Somehow this person's going to escape. Sam just goes full-blown ape shit, starts stabbing him to death, going nuts. And when they unmask her, it's fucking Tara. How upsetting would that be? And then suddenly this other character, this brand new character points a gun in Sam's face and says, oh, I'm, I'm the other one or something like that. Some kind of like che mildly cheesy line, but it won't even matter because of how dark th that thing that just happened happened. This is something that would just be so dark and such a shock to people. We, we need a little bit of devastation, especially if we're going to keep these characters going through with each movie. They also have to play into Sam's bloodlust a little bit. I feel like they're not just throwing that in there because, oh, she's Billy's daughter. That, that's not the extent of that. It's definitely a little more than that. They're, they're setting it up for something in the next movie. Is it just that she, oh, Sam's always going to be the one to take down the ghost face killer? No, I say I want to see her make a mistake like that. I want to see our characters make some kind of fucked up mistake like this on accident where they accidentally kill one of their own, like, people who's totally innocent. Think that, think about that scene in The Descent where you have this one character just absolutely going ape shit on all of, like, the monsters in the cave and then she turns around and accidentally stabs her friend in the neck. Think about how devastating that scene was and how powerful it was. It's scenes like that that stick with me with horror movies opposed to, like, like, happy endings, because that's not as terrifying as something like this. That's my argument. I would love to see Scream go down a path like this, because they've really never done it before. Everything is always wrapped up all neat and everything, and, like, most of their friends survive. It's always a good time. Let's change it up a little bit for this sequel. Why not? Let's just experiment a little bit and see if it works. If it doesn't work with people, it doesn't work. But at least we can appreciate Scream 6 for being ambitious, trying to keep the franchise alive, and doing something different. So what do you guys think about this theory? Obviously, a lot of you want to keep Tara alive so I can see I can I'm already imagining the plethora of comments I'm going to get about they can't kill Tara that's crazy Jenna Ortega is amazing Jenna Ortega is amazing but she's also a fantastic
fantastic actress, and I would kind of like to see her die, honestly, just because of how well she's done it in the past. And after all, this is a slasher movie. People are gonna die, and one of our core four characters that survived the last film, at least one of them's dying in this next film. I could, I, I would bet all my money on that for sure. At least one of them is gone in this next film. It's, it's upsetting. I'm sure it's sad to some people, but it's probably gonna happen. What do you guys think, though? Is Tara gonna be the one to bite the dust to, to her, to the hands of her sister? Is that what's gonna happen? Leave me something about it in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this new Scream 6 Theory video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more horror content. Also, if you want to support this channel even further, you can support me on either Patreon or my channel members by clicking that join button on my page right next to where the subscribe button usually is. Thank you guys so much for watching this new video again, and as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.